Oh, face, because you, Nathan I am McGovern, telling you. you don't want to read a headline tomorrow saying Nathan McGovern from Animal Rebellion slams Meghan and Harry for using private plane. You don't want to say it because, like them, you're a flaming hypocrite. You'd oh, rather go in. There we go. You've got me a column. You'd rather. Brilliant. You'd rather go. Fantastic. You'd piece. rather go into restaurants like Aldo's or Salt Bay's or whatever and just make a nuisance of yourselves because it's easier. All right, guys. So I stumbled across this very, very, very entertaining but also kind of informative interview here between Piers Morgan and a vegan activist. Um, now, the reason why this interview is happening is because these vegan activists, along with climate change activists as well too, have been vandalizing restaurants and public places basically all over Europe, okay? We've all seen the videos of them doing this stuff. It's getting out of control, it's getting out of hand. Right, I think that these people need to be arrested and held accountable. Somebody should be made an example out of in order for this stuff to stop, <laughs> okay? But anyways, in this interview, Piers Morgan is going to confront this vegan activist about why he's doing this, okay? Like, what is the point, okay? Who are you trying to convince and what are you trying to convince them of? And do you think that this is the best way to do it? And then he's also going to uh proceed to eat steak <laughs> in front of the vegan activist's face which i find to be absolutely hilarious okay sometimes i think that piers morgan for uh as annoying as he can be uh when he's debating leftists right i actually do love it it's, it's actually pretty entertaining stuff okay so without further ado let's go ahead and get into it. they've tipped milk all over the floor of fortnum and mason and selfridges in london they've hurled white paint at the gates of the houses of parliament now they've targeted a high-end steakhouse in London, and the waitresses did what many have wanted to do with these protesters for a while. Take a look. Thank you for the market. Hi. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> That's like the nicest way I've ever seen well, my thrown out. Uh, now is Animal Rebellion spokesman Nathan McGovern and celebrity chef Aldo Zilli. Got it right this time. He picked me up on it. It's Aldo, not Aldo. Aldo's a very British pronunciation of an Italian name. It is. Right? It is. Uh, good to see you both. Uh, Nathan, start with you. Um, I I don't like vegans very much. I don't think any of you are oh, no. very healthy. Oh, I'm not surprised by that. Piece. Yeah, I think you all look pretty pasty-faced and unhealthy to me. Um, but that's your choice. What I don't do is I don't go running into vegan restaurants and start screaming abuse at you all and have to be pulled out by people because you're ruining everyone's fun. Why do you do that to meat eaters? Well, Piers, you've started on an absolute blinder today. I actually brought a little game with me for the, me, Aldo, perhaps, the audience to play. It's a Piers Morgan a vegan bingo. Maybe we get a zoom on that from the camera. And you've actually just ticked off one a straight away. I'll just go with that. We're looking at row or a column already. Mm. So the thing is, within years, technology like precision fermentation, you know, alt protein, is going to produce the exact same products that you love right now using a fraction of the land, producing a fraction of the yeah, carbon but I like print, eating meat. It's the exact same product. No, but I like eating meat. Fine. You know... <laughs> First and foremost, this dude is not answering the question, okay? The question was, why in the world do you feel the need to go into meat eater restaurants with your nonsense when meat eaters don't do that to vegans? So instead of actually answering the question... Uh, this guy deflects by, you know, having this weird game that he's playing, right? Where he's doing bingo for everything that he believes that Piers Morgan is going to say during the interview. And then he goes on to talk about, I guess, alternative sources of protein that are not meat, right? Basically, like, you know, lab-created meat and stuff like that. Bruh, I'm never eating that, right? I will never, ever, ever make that a primary source of my meat or protein in my diet. Now, I ain't gonna say I would never eat it, okay? Maybe I would, who knows, right? I've never had any. I've never had any of the fake meat, right? Um, I, I, I don't think that I'm ever gonna give up eating meat, right? Like, I am a meat eater for life. Like, I'm actually a meat hoarder. I'm actually obsessed with meat. And um, I, I just don't think that no matter what innovations come about, I'm not going to stop eating real meat, right? You, you're going to literally have to kill me. I don't care about the climate. I don't care about any of the other stuff, right? I, I simply am going to eat meat, period, right? I'm just saying. So you'll be eating the exact same product. In fact, the more you guys do this kind of thing, the more, I, the more meat I want to eat. 
That's absolutely fine. No, it's true. That's you fine. That's you fine. Literally, <laughs> it, it's a bit. Honestly, it's true. The more stuff you do like this, Sorry, I, didn't, just... I didn't catch that. You, it's true, is it? You've said that about three times. I didn't. I didn't what's what's catch true? It. That, you, that you like eating meat. Yes. You know? Oh, oh, thanks. I didn't get it the first yeah. three times. I, I mean, how <laughs> committed a vegan are you? <laughs> how committed a vegan am I? Would you eat? Do you drink almond milk? Oh. You've ticked off another one. Fantastic, you want, Piers. You are have, on an absolute Does it have role. answering questions? Though? I don't know. I'll, I'll keep that one hidden from you. No, know, just, take, take the fun can out Can you just of answer game. questions? <laughs> Otherwise, it's not much of an interview. I mean, you have your little <laughs> chart, but do you drink almond milk? No. Do you eat almonds? No. Do you eat avocado? <laughs> no. What do you That's super cap. That's super cap. Now, the reason why he's saying no, because he probably watched that uh, interview that Piers Morgan did before, would another uh, like climate change vegan, some activist, right? Some woke activist. And he brought up the example of almonds and uh, avocados because one of the uh, arguments for why we should go vegan or whatever, uh, not eat meat is water usage. <laughs> when, you know, almonds and avocados, like they take up so much water, okay? A ton of water to actually grow and produce uh, those plants, right? So when confronted with these arguments, Right, this guy is is being super cap, or he's basically not even trying to answer the question. What do you eat? What do you drink? I love seasonal British fruit and veg. Right. You know, I love supporting British farmers. I love going to a farmer's mm. market, seeing what they have to offer. You know, I love eating a plant-based diet. But most diet. science now says that if you don't have a balanced diet, it's actually unhealthy for you. Yeah, exactly. That's why a, pl a plant-based diet, a balanced plant-based diet is healthy. <laughs> Except when you get that B12 deficiency, though. Not saying all vegans do, but again, there are studies out there that, that show that, hey, you know, uh, you need to consume uh, sources of, of protein like meat, eggs, fish, right? You know, you need to consume these things in order to get B12. Um, these happen to be things that vegans don't eat, right? So they have to supplement their B12. Aldo. We, what do you feel? I mean, your restaurant is very close to where this happened, right? What do you feel about these activists running in, ruining people's meals? Listen, um, 25 years ago, I opened one of the first vegetarian restaurants in London, in Soho. And um, if it was now, it's probably more successful then. It didn't get very successful. But anyway, come, cut long story short. I don't have any problems. I've written a, a vegetarian book, not a vegan book. I don't have any problems with um, vegan and veganism and vegetarian. Facts. People. Bruh, facts. I mean, it's like, I'm not trying to get you to be a carnivore like me, right? I'm just saying. Like, I'm not trying to get you to do that. I don't care what you eat, so you shouldn't care what I eat. That's the argument, right? You can eat what you want to eat. There's not all positives and upsides to what you eat, okay? Whether we're talking about overall health or we're talking about uh, the planet, okay? So just mind your own business and I'm going to mind mine, right? That's that's how things should be, but these people don't want to do that. Because I have restaurants. I'm a consultant for a number of restaurants, number of restaurant companies, and uh, we have vegan and vegetarians on menus. Mm. So I don't understand when it gets out of hand that these people have to well, they disrupt have no our business. Because well, they have no respect for meat eaters. Uh, but if we were doing the same thing to them, they'd all go nuts, right? We're Facts. They would go nuts, <laughs> right? And that's why I wish he would do these type of interviews with BLM protesters, right? Maybe he has, right? But these are the type of interviews people need to do with BLM protesters. Be like, um, how do you feel, how would you feel if somebody came from outside of your neighborhood and came in your neighborhood and started tearing it up, <laughs> right? Would you be okay with that? Would you be okay with the same things that you did to other people, right? Again. If activists went into a vegan restaurant, meat-eating activists, went into a vegetarian or vegan restaurant and started just doing a whole bunch of nonsense as protests, these people would be losing their minds. They wouldn't be able to handle it, right? They would literally go insane, and everybody knows it, but they feel like they have the right to do it to other people, and you're supposed to go along with it, or else you're a climate denier, or you're some type of bigot, right? They're going to find a way, to, again, to say, again, you're some type of bigot. Wouldn't you? You'll go nuts if I came running into your little vegan hell holes and began screaming abuse. <laughs> you'd all throw your toys out the pram, as you do on a daily basis. I'm not throwing my toys out the pram right now, Piers. Uh, I'm, you... I'm loving this, to be honest. What are you, lo what are you loving? 
I'm loving it, this open conversation that we're having about this actual quite But why do you have issue. to go and, and do a, a restaurant and uh, disrupt our business, disrupt the customers, other people that want to eat the meat, other people that want to enjoy themselves, they want to go and have a night out. Uh, I don't have any problems with you guys coming to our restaurants and ordering a vegan dish. In fact, in January, we always do a, a veganuary and we go through a lot of different um, ingredients to create menus for you guys. I don't understand why we have to suffer uh, your uh, uh, mentality of coming to our restaurants and trying to disrupt the customers that are having a fantastic time the, and they want to the eat the steak. What's the answer? Well, because <laughs> they're entitled, right? They've been told from Woke University that what they're doing is good for society. They're saving the planet, right? Their goal is bigger than everything else. Don't worry about all the violence and destruction. Don't worry about the people's lives that you're, you know, ruining sometimes, right? Their businesses, okay? You're disrupting their dinners, okay? Don't worry about all that. Because you are saving the planet because what you're doing is so righteous and so just. All that other stuff that you do don't matter, right? You're on the right side of history. Again, these people are entitled and they're coddled because their ideas are never challenged. And again, they feel like they have the right to do this because they feel like they're doing something that is morally necessary to do. They feel like they're trying to save the planet. And I, I just don't think that's the case. I don't think these people are saving the planet, right? They're not saving the planet, okay? Um, so, yeah, that's why. That's why they do it. And they would not be cool with you doing it to them. No, it's actually a good question, Aldo. And actually, it's fantastic that you create fantastic vegan dishes. The fact of the matter is, when we look at high-end restaurants, you know, salt-based restaurant, Manor up in Manchester that was also disrupted the weekend, these are symbols of a broken system. Ding, you know, ding, ding. Because he makes nice <laughs> Symbols of a broken system where, you know, there's 1,500 quid getting why charged make, for a steak. Why is he making millions I please around the world? I was, I was in one of his restaurants last week in Qatar. I loved it. Fantastic. But he served me. I've got a clip, I think, of him. Yeah, I was so waiting for you to show it up. I was wondering little, how long it would take. It was me doing his little uh, salt trick. He told you me. Weren't, you weren't very good at it. He then actually no. cooked it in front of me and he's, he fed me, actually, directly fed me the meat into my mouth. It was delicious. Loved it. <laughs> Fine. Well, loved I, it. I would invite any vegan. But if you'd run in and tried to interrupt and just ruin everyone's night, I would have done what those waitresses did, just thrown you out. That's absolutely fine. So what's the point of it all? What does it achieve? None of you make me want to change my mind. I just think, what annoying little squits. Honestly, I do. It's the same when you're chucking paint at Van Gogh paintings. It's the same when you're tying yourself to fuel pumps or hanging yourself on bridges and stopping people using dart for tunnel. It's all the same. You're just all too annoying. So the British public don't like annoying people and they don't like their lives being disrupted. They want their freedom to have a choice. The choice that I had in Qatar last week to have Salt Bay, whose restaurant you, well, you can you invaded, imagine you... to do this to my mouth. <laughs> can Look, you imagine someone that's, coming that's in fine, this is it. This and is, disrupting this is your my... evening? Have we got the clip? We haven't got the clip. Oh, what shit. Oh, you just run it, OK. No, but can you imagine you coming to our restaurants and, and then you get some people coming to your table and trying to disrupt your evening? It's, a, it's abuse. I'm going to start, Ryan, I'm going to start running into vegan restaurants. That's fine. I, Go I'm for it. I'm just shouting that's your, that's your and being right, annoying right and protest, grabbing yes. tables and so you can't eat your gruel and just see how you lot like it. Honestly, I'm going to go to your house and chop paint Piers. all over it. Piers. You've got a right to price. Oof! You've got me another one. Bam. Take it off your bingo. Cast it. Notice how this dude has not answered any questions <laughs> whatsoever. He had to answer any questions, right? But he did say that, well, these meat-eating restaurants are, I guess, a part of a broken system, right? Which is the same logic and justification that BLM and Antifa use to do political violence, right? This is what the left does. When they do political violence, they justify by saying, well, again, I'm saving the planet, right? I'm saving the world. I'm fighting against racism. I'm fighting against oppression, right? This is what they do to justify. And it's just funny because the mainstream level media, because they don't have any cojones, everybody knows it's wrong, but they don't want to call them out because, again, they, they don't want to be called science deniers or racists or homophobes or, big or whatever, right? That's just kind of how it goes. But, yeah, I mean... If people started protesting these vegan restaurants or pulling up to wherever climate change <laughs> activists 
uh, extremists uh, live at and started just protesting them for no reason, again, they would lose their minds. <laughs> no your bacon, son. <laughs> but where's the salt? Where's, where's it? Won't need any of this gruel. Let's put that to one side, but I will have a bit of steak just to... You didn't salt it, though. You see, all you've achieved <laughs> is you've made me want to do this. Just that's, eat a that's lovely... That's absolutely fine. Mm. You go mm. for it. Mm. <laughs> Mm. Do, you know many, do you know how many steaks he's had from my restaurant? <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. But here's my point. I love eating steak. I'm not going to stop eating steak. Yeah. And the, the very last thing on earth that will stop me eating steak is people like you with your pasty faces running into our restaurants telling us to stop eating steak. That's, That's the fine. very last thing that I'm going to do. That is absolutely Because you don't fine represent to me is. vitality or good health. It is all like you want a good bit of steak. That's absolutely Honestly, you fine. You're fully entitled to that opinion. And as I've just said earlier, you're right to protest if you want to run into Your a mates are also the Extinction Absolutely Rebellion, fine. right? My mates. You're all, like, interwoven, like you said before we came on air. Like a, like a wool and blank. Well, are you together. connected or not? No. So we're a sister movement. A sister movement? What's that? Extinction Rebellion. Sounds a bit sexist. No, we... We have, you know, common goals, you know... What are your common as, goals? Irritating people. <laughs> such, well, as, <laughs> such as tackling the climate and ecological emergencies, mm. which, you know... I'm sure all of us. What did you think of Meghan and Harry using a private plane? Oof! There we go, <laughs> Meghan Markle. That's another one. What That's the other four two? for nine. Ah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to give you that. What mate. did you? Th so this dude made a, basically a list of uh, questions that he's not going to answer. Right? Topics he's not going to talk about. Right? That he knew that Piers Morgan would break up. So funny. Think of them using a private plane to, to go to this uh, award show. You must be furious, it's right? It's incredible how you manage Are you furious? to turn <laughs> this into all. Oh, Let's dump on Meghan hey, and hey, Harry. Your, your agenda, Piers. Oh, you just talked about the environment. I just, wonder, plane? Plane? I just wonder whether... Would you go in their plane? I just wonder no, whether you... It. Do you feel... I, I wouldn't go on a do plane. Do you feel no, angry no. they used a private plane or not? No, or I think what, what we should have is affordable travel for right. everyone. But they, they used a, a private what plane. What we should have is travel systems. Do you criticise them for using a private plane or not? You know, or because it's, they're it's the woke king and queen, you're not allowed to. They're using a plane. Is it I, would have much, can't? I would have much preferred. You know why you can't? Don't you, Nathan? Because this is against Piers, the hypocrisy. To you your can't face, because you, Nathan I am McGovern. You. you don't want to read a headline tomorrow saying Nathan McGovern from Animal Rebellion slams Meghan and Harry for using private plane. You don't want to say it because, like them, you're a flaming hypocrite. You'd oh, rather go in. There we go. You've, you've got me a column. You'd rather. Brilliant. You'd rather go. Fantastic. You'd Piers. rather go into restaurants like Aldo's or Salt Bay's or whatever and just make a nuisance of yourselves because it's easier but what easier. you should be doing if you're intellectually honest and say Meghan and Harry stop using private planes but you won't yeah because they I will, I will say it right now if you let me. I will say it right now Aldo, if you will let me final yeah. words to you about a balanced diet most science <laughs> I've read lately yeah so that's just again hilarious um he didn't answer any questions because he can't answer questions uh, because he knows that answering those questions would immediately reveal the hypocrisy of these woke extremists. And like Pierce said, you know, it's just much easier just to go and make a whole bunch of noise, right? And disrupt people's lives and be as annoying as possible, rather than to actually face real, um, you know, pushback, right, against your ideas or be challenged on your ideas. Because again, you might end up embarrassing yourself even more, right? So, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.